Hello, a warm welcome to course on data modeling from Analytica. This course will introduce you to the fundamental concepts vital for data analytics. As statistics and analytics is becoming more and more critical to decision making, it is imperative that you have some knowledge in data modeling. This will help in decision making by leveraging data to solve complex business problems. In this video, we will learn about data sampling together with types of data and representation of data. Now let us understand the difference between population and sample. Population is the entire collection of data which we wish to analyze, describe, or draw conclusions about. The sample is the part of the population that we actually examine in order to gather information and draw valid conclusions about the larger group. A sample must represent the characteristic of the population. Hence, it needs to be large enough and should have similar characteristic as the population so that when you draw conclusions it should be reflective of what your population is. For example, if a survey is given to 100 students randomly selected from the 8th grade, what would the population be? Well, it would be all the students in 8th grade because, collectively, they make the entire population of the 8th grade. However, since we randomly selected 100 students, those 100 students would be the representative sample of the population. There are various methods of sampling techniques are available, but the most frequent method of sampling are simple random sampling and stratified sampling. But why do we work on samples rather than population? Firstly, it is cost effective and quick. Think of a scenario where a government of a country wants to study the effectiveness of a newly launched program for girls between 15 to 25 years of age. If the country has total 1 million of girls between 15 to 25, think how much time a survey team would take to collect data on all of the girls and the amount of cost it incurs to reach out to these girls. Sampling induces efficiency in analysis and helps in dealing with large population more effectively. For example, if we want to know the purchase behavior of all the customers in a credit card portfolio, it would be quick and easy to analyze a set of customers from the entire customer base and draw a quick inference about the population instead of analyzing each customer's behavior. Secondly, collecting data on more people means more chance of having data collection error. Rather, we collect more detailed information on a smaller set of people, that is, sample. Finally, often collection of data on entire population may not be practical. Suppose we want to find out the lifetime of an electric bulb manufactured in a factory. We cannot use all the bulbs and wait for their failure, then no bulbs would be left to sell in the market. Data is all around us, and it is the most important new natural resource. Data can be broadly classified into two categories, that is, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative data includes nominal or ordinal data, whereas quantitative data includes interval or ratio data. Quasi-interval data presents a special case. Let's now talk about the types of data. Data is of five types, namely nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio, and quasi-interval. Nominal data measures without order. It simply indicates that two or more classifications are different. For example, type of school is an example of nominal data because it could either be a vocational or private or state. Ordinal data measures with order. It indicates that the measurement classifications are different and can be ranked in particular order. The letter grading system like grades A, B, C, and D could be a good example of ordinal data because the values follow an order of importance. Interval data measures with order and establishes numerically equal distances on the scale. For example, the performance and SAT exam is a type of interval data 
where the difference between 800 and 700 is equal to the difference between 600 and 500. Ratio data measures have equal intervals and a true zero point. For example, how many answers are right in a test? Quasi-interval is a type of scaling that falls between ordinal and interval. Technically ordinal, but can be analyzed as if it were interval. A good example of quasi-interval is a Likert scale in an opinion poll of five. That is, strongly agree to one, that is, strongly disagree. It is important to represent the data we collect from sample in an understandable and workable manner. We can summarize the data in a tabular format. We can put a data table. We can create different graphs and represents. We can see some data graphs here. We can also summarize the data as metrics or measures. These are called statistic of the data. As it is calculated from sample, they are known as sample statistic, such as sample mean, median, etc. We'll discuss in detail about the same in the next module. Just to recapitulate, in this video we learned the concepts about sampling, types of data, and their representation. In the next video, we will be explaining the concepts of measures of central location. Thanks for watching the video.